All right, we're making progress with the uh, Hellcat swap. Uh, Cage is in, finish that up. Um, I had a few questions on the engine mounting and the transmission mounting with the 8HP90. So I'm gonna just give you a quick breakdown of uh, what, I, what I was able to do on mine to, to get it to work. So I have a, a RMS K member, but the K member was for an LA. So I cut the mounts off and I asked um, uh, Riley Motorsports if they could send me the perches that they use for the Gen 3 Hemi. So uh, they're pretty simple. It's just uh, like a C, uh, C bracket over there at the uh, motor mount, and they sent me the um, all the all the uh, motor mounts and stands and everything. Um, so what I did was I first picked up a Holly uh, swap cross member. So I'll show you that in one second. Let me get under the car. So. The Holly swap cross member was supposed to be able to fit the 8HP90 in the tunnel without any tunnel modifications. Um, that's using a stock K member. But because I didn't have mounts in the RMS K member yet, I, I had the engine on an engine hoist. I could move it up and down wherever it needed to go. There was absolutely no way this cross member ever would have fit the 8HP90 in the tunnel. I don't think under any condition, stock cross member, wherever you put the motor, it wouldn't make a difference. This never would have fit in the tunnel with the way the Holly cross member was built. I uh, actually emailed pictures to Holly. Um, they said they'd send them to their engineer and have them get back to me and I never got a reply. Um, what I ended up doing though is I realized that I wanted to use the cross member to locate the motor forward to back because I figured if they've done these before with, with Gen 3 Hemis and Hellcats, they know that forward to back position is good for um, you know, clearing the water manifold at the top and everything. And I just figured that's an easy way of doing it. So I, I kept the cross member locating it forward to back. And what I did was I, I had to notch out the sides of the torsion bar cross member. Um, you probably could have just hit it with a hammer to clear the, the yoke. It was just a little tight on the yoke side. So I made just a little bit of clearance there. It came out terrible because I was welding upside down outside in, in the tent and, uh, it just it really isn't good, but it just needs to clear it. So the uh, structure of this car is, is mostly held together with the cage and subframe connectors and everything else. But then um, what I did was I pushed the transmission up as high as I could get it. And uh, it actually went up a decent amount. I got it up there pretty good. And then what I had to do was drop this Holly Cross member about, uh, I think it's about an, maybe an inch, maybe a little over an inch. So um, you see, I just welded, I cut out little tabs, welded them, welded them, and then I put these uh, all the, right here. Uh, it's like an inch extension. And I welded these strips just to reinforce a little bit more. But uh, again, came out terrible. I was rushing it. I was just trying to get this thing done, but it'll, it'll do the job. But um, so basically all I did was I dropped the Holly Cross member about an inch, maybe a little over an inch. And then I, I that allowed me to get the transmission so it would sit up in the tunnel. If you didn't drop this cross member an inch, you'd be way up into the, into the tunnel. You would never be able to clear the tunnel um, no matter where you put the engine. I don't think you, you could lower the engine enough you know, to get an angle where it wouldn't be going up into the transmission tunnel. So this way I didn't have to cut anything else out of the tunnel except for just those two notches that I just kind of uh, made right there on the sides of the torsion bar cross member, which again, you, you might have been able to do that with a hammer and a torch. I just didn't have the leverage under the car where I was working on it in the tent. Um, right now, I have the engine, I shimmed it up as high as I think I could get it, and the engine is sitting at a two, two and a half degree angle down. So the tail shaft is two and a half degrees down. So if you look, it's, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's got pretty good ground clearance. It's not any you know, excessive crazy angle. It's not like it's six degrees down or something like that. Um, you can see from here, I'm trying to get a side view. But uh, everything tucks up pretty well. Um, I have no ground clearance issues. I mean, this car is not that uh, low. It's not like a slam pro touring car or anything. I could show you the um, you know suspension right now, the way I have it set. But with the height that I have it at now, I, uh, I was able to straddle my six inch cinder blocks coming out of the tent and getting it into the garage. And it cleared everything, oil pan, transmission. So I don't think I would have any problems with driving this car anywhere, it's pretty much gonna clear a, uh, it's like a rock crawler at this point. But, um, so I have that at two and a half degrees down. 
and I've got, uh, show you the Dana 60 back here. Um, I'm running a Dana 60 and Caltrax. And the Dana 60 I have at a, uh, no shims or anything, just the way it bolted up, it's coming to a 2.75 degree angle down. So the pinion's nose down 2.75 degrees. So it seems like everything's gonna work. Um, I can show you, have a uh, crappy diagram here. So you see if the pinion's 2.75 degrees down, and on the left, you see the transmission is 2.5 degrees down. As the pinion wraps up, if we're assuming a five degree wrap up with Caltrax, I really don't know if that's gonna be more than it will or less than it will, but I figure that's somewhere in the ballpark. Then I should be getting pretty close to parallel with the uh, plane of the, of the transmission output shaft under wrap up. So hoping that's gonna be good. Um, you could also see the pinion is 9.25 degrees from the ground. Transmission is 20 degrees from the ground. Uh, uh, two point, I'm sorry, 19.25 uh, inches from the ground. And the uh, center of the output shaft is 20 inches from the ground. So they're both pretty close. The transmission is slightly higher, but I'm thinking this is probably gonna give me pretty good drive shaft angles. Um, the whole point of this is that I've been reading about a lot of issues with uh, 8 HP 90 swap cars specifically completely exploding the output shaft. So, uh, not the output shaft, the, um, the casing around the output shaft. And um, it doesn't seem like anybody is really sure what's causing it. There might be a few different reasons why people are having the issue, um, you know, depending on, on the car. Uh, some guys were claiming it was from damage from the donor cars because a lot of these are out of pullouts, like mine is, that could have been wrecked. Um, a lot of guys were claiming it was critical speed of the drive shaft. Um, and some guys are, are claiming it's just that these, these output shafts can't tolerate any, any load, side load, up and down load movement. Uh, most of the guys that had the problems were using sh uh, slip shafts and the drive shaft as you have to. You either have to have a two piece drive shaft or slip shaft, some way to take up the, the pinion movement because these don't have a slip yoke at the front. Um, they use a Synax hub, and the hub actually moves the U-joint back a little bit, which puts more leverage on the output shaft, I would think. It makes, I, I think it, it creates some issues there. But, um, so I'm still debating whether or not I even want to keep this 8HP90. I don't really, I'm not really too confident that I figured out exactly what's causing these people to have these grenading transmissions. They all seem to grenade down track at high speeds. So it kind of seems like a critical speed issue, but it's kind of also hard to believe that so many drive shaft shops screwed up such a basic thing as making sure the drive shaft they were building has a uh, uh, critical speed that's adequate for the application they're using it for. But um, one thing I did notice was they were all longer wheelbase vehicles. They were trucks, pickup trucks. Um, I think a B body and a C body had the issue that were swapped. So in the Z body, it's very short. Um, it, it shouldn't be hard to get a drive shaft that has a pretty substantial critical speed that won't run into any issues. I have a 323 out back, which is the smallest I can go with the S60. And um, I'll probably be running, I was going to run a 28 inch tire. I might try to get a 30 inch tire on it now. It's probably gonna hook up better anyway in a 30 inch tire if I could fit it. And um, you know, this, this way it's gonna be a, a little less critical speed on the track. And I'll probably just run like a 28 inch on the street. I uh, don't go too crazy on the street with this car. I just cruise it. I like to drive it everywhere. And uh, just on the track, I want something that's that's not going to be spinning that drive shaft too fast. But um, I don't know. I guess I'll, uh, I'll keep everybody updated on, on how it goes, what I find out. And um, if I figure out that I'm going to end up moving forward with it, I'll probably start working on wiring up the, uh, the Sound German controller. Uh, as far as engine wiring goes, everything is pretty much there. I uh, just got to loom everything, wrap it. Um, I got the Hellcrate harness here. Uh, what I did with the wiring, um, actually, I'll, I'll save that for another video, divide it up a little bit. But uh, thanks for watching.